Hi there. Thank you for joining me for this eighth session of the Medical Assessment of Impairment. My name is Roger Pillema and I'm an orthopaedic surgeon with a particular interest in impairment assessment. In the sixth presentation, I described a case of complete axillary nerve lesion with deltoid atrophy. What I would like to do in this talk is discuss less severe injuries to the axillary nerve with or without deltoid wasting. The literature tells us that axillary nerve lesions are not uncommon in association with dislocations of the shoulder or fractures of the proximal humerus. The majority of these lesions recover completely within a year. The literature also tells us that apart from these two situations, axillary nerve lesions are uncommon. The aim of this talk is to try and demonstrate to you that not only are axillary nerves not uncommon, but they are very common indeed, and that the diagnosis is simply being missed. The key to making the diagnosis, I would suggest, is the finding of diminished sensation over the deltoid muscle in the area supplied by the axillary nerve. This slide shows the typical area of sensory loss in an axillary nerve lesion. I'm not sure how one would diagnose an axillary nerve lesion without finding the sensory loss. So let me ask you one question at the outset, which I will repeat at the end of the talk. When was the last time you checked for sensory loss over the deltoid in a patient with shoulder symptoms? Just to revise the anatomy of the axillary nerve, and this is the same slide shown in the previous talk. The axillary nerve is a branch of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, which passes backwards through the quadrilateral space, together with the posterior humeral circumflex artery. The space is bounded superiorly by the teres minor muscle, inferiorly by the teres major, medially by the long head of triceps, and laterally by the humeral shaft. In the applied anatomy of the axillary nerve, it has been clearly shown that distal to the subscapularis muscle, the axillary nerve divides into anterior and posterior branches. The anterior branch contains all the fibres that innervate the anterior and middle deltoid. The posterior branch contains the majority or all of the fibres to the posterior deltoid as well as all of the sensory fibres. The significance of this will become apparent later in the talk when trying to determine the actual site of the axillary nerve injury. I have been testing very careful for axillary nerve lesion for many years now and I have seen dozens of cases during this time and in the vast majority of cases the cause has been a traction injury to the shoulder either by trying to prevent something heavy from falling or simply lifting something unexpectedly very heavy. As I will demonstrate in slides and videos, there are three clinical signs that help to make the diagnosis. Firstly, and most importantly, diminished sensation over the deltoid, a sign without which I would not be able to make the diagnosis and therefore is present in every case. Secondly, and present in approximately two-thirds of cases, a localised area of tenderness posteriorly over the course of the axillary nerve. And thirdly, in approximately one-third of cases, wasting of the posterior deltoid. This slide shows the localised area of tenderness and also shows the wasting of the posterior deltoid and the normal side. And a posterior view showing the affected left side with a concave deltoid and the normal right slide with a slightly convex deltoid. Another case showing the area of sensory loss, the site of localised tenderness, as well as slight flattening of the posterior deltoid, compared to the normal right side with a well-rounded deltoid. This is a patient with the typical sensory loss and flattening of the posterior deltoid, compared to the well-rounded right side. Note again the area of sensory loss and wasting, compared to the well-rounded normal left side and the posterior view showing the obvious wasting on the right side. I am now going to try and demonstrate to you how common axillary nerve lesions actually are. I examine on average four to five patients per day with regard to impairment assessment. I would suggest that on average I see one patient with an axillary nerve lesion every three to four weeks. I'm going to show you videos of two patients with axillary nerve lesions whom I saw on the same day. Now, this is the first time I've seen two cases of axillary nerve lesion in one day, 
but it is not uncommon to see two cases in one week. Please note that both of these patients have sensory loss over the deltoid in the axillary nerve distribution and they both have tenderness in a very localised area. The first case is a lady aged 56 who developed pain in both shoulders when she lost her grip on a heavy crate that she was lifting and then attempted to stop it falling, sustaining traction injuries to both shoulders. She had had arthroscopic decompressions of both sides with an excision of the distal clavicle on the one side. Her injury was in April 2010 and I examined her in August 2016. I will let the video speak for itself. Tell me when it starts to get numb. Now. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Now. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Now. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Now. now. In the back. Clear difference? If this is a 10 out of 10 prick, how yeah. much is that, would you say? Oh, maybe three. Okay, maybe, let's, maybe say, less. let's say this sign. Tell me when it changes to not so sharp. Now. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Now. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Now. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Now. Tell me, tell me when I get to the sore spot. There, there, Just there. there, okay? Not so bad here. Huh? Tell me when I get to the sore spot. It's there. Okay? So Let's do this side. I know it's not a sore. Tell me if I get to a sore spot at all. There. Just there. The second case was of a 48-year-old male railway worker who in 2012 was carrying a heavy sleeper with a workmate when the workmate dropped his side and the patient sustained a traction injury mainly to his right shoulder. He also had an arthroscopic decompression of his shoulder carried out. As mentioned, he was examined on the same day as the first patient. Feel, feel the pin prick here? Yep. Sharp all the way? Yep. Down there, all the way? Yep. Okay, if this is a 10 out of 10 prick, yeah. let's go around to this side. Uh, tell me when it changes. This is 10 out of 10? Yeah. Tell me when it changes, right? There. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Yep. Tell me when it gets sharp again. Yep. Tell me when it gets sharp again. There. Okay. Tell me when I get to a sore spot. There. Just yeah. there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come back this way. Tell me when I get to a sore spot. Right there. Yeah, there, in there. In there, hey? Yep. As mentioned earlier, when we discussed the applied anatomy, the sensory fibres and the motor fibres of the posterior deltoid are both contained in the posterior branch of the auxiliary nerve. In every case that I've seen, where there has been both sensory loss and localised tenderness and where there has been deltoid wasting, this has always been of the posterior deltoid only. This would suggest that the site of axillary nerve damage would be to the posterior branch after the nerve divides into anterior and posterior branches. In summary then, in my opinion, axillary nerve lesions are not uncommon lesions but in fact are very common lesions. I would also suggest that the diagnosis is missed simply because it is not looked for. In my opinion again, the only way to make the diagnosis initially is to find sensory loss over the deltoid muscle. So let me ask you once again the question that I asked at the start of the talk. When was the last time you checked for sensory loss over the deltoid? As I will emphasize in a future talk on the importance of sensory testing, if you don't think of it, you won't look for it, and if you don't look for it, you will never find it. There is, however, a very significant corollary to this statement. That is, if you are really intent on finding a particular condition or physical sign, you are likely to find it more often than it is actually present, and there are many explanations for this. While I have no doubt that the two live cases shown have axillary nerve lesions, one could certainly be critical of the method of sensory testing shown, a very important consideration.
I hope this talk will encourage you to test for sensory loss over the deltoid in all future cases with shoulder symptoms. Once again, thank you for your attention and I hope that you will join me for the next presentation. Until then, Salani Gashli.